So what is CVN? CVN is actually a checksum and is used to verify calibration data. Is this the original software or has it already been modified by someone? Or did the dealer update the file incorrectly? For all these purposes, automakers have implemented CVN. It's of great importance for inspection and warranty. In this video, I will not only explain but demonstrate how this number is calculated. I will be using the logger I developed because most other loggers do not have access to the entire RAM memory. After switching the ignition on, CVN calculation begins. It takes around 90 seconds to obtain the final value. But this doesn't mean that I or anyone else will have to wait 90 seconds to check the CVN. The CVN was previously stored in memory, and for clarification let's briefly look at some theory. The heart of the ECU is the processor, and the processor has different types of memory. Let's call them Flash and EEPROM, even though these names are not entirely correct, they are commonly used by most tuners. The flash memory contains a file that tuners modify, and this file is the same for, let's say, all ECUs. On the other hand, the EEPROM stores individual data such as the immobilizer code, adaptations, failure data, mileage, and CVN. Some cars don't just have one ECU, they have two, master and slave. While the files inside of these ECUs are identical, the calibration verification numbers differ, because the calculation algorithm depends on type of ECU. So, once the CVN is calculated, it's stored in the EEPROM and anyone can check it. But it's better to wait a couple of minutes to make sure it's up to date. Now I'm going to calculate the CVN in my own editor that I've developed. The initial file is in its stock condition and as you can see the CVN matches what's displayed in the logger. However, when I change the random value, the CVN becomes entirely different. The second value has been decremented by 1 and to make the CVN match the original CVN, we need to increment the unused value at the end of the line. Of course, the actual algorithm for calculating CVN is much more complex. As you can see, I've just changed a single value and the CVN is now completely different. So we need to add a specific value at the end of the file. After this, the CVN will match the original one. I've tried to explain it as simple as possible and hope that you now have a basic understanding of what CVN is.